since my uh, last video I've had quite a few requests to see the sticky bomb so I'm just going to have another little four minute video uh, give you an introduction to the sticky bomb and show you some of the other hand grenades which I've got that are a little bit different from uh, our conventional sort of pineapple or stick grenades that we're all familiar with we have a look at the sticky bomb first um, it comes in a, a sprung spherical light gauge metal case and that case encloses what is essentially a big lump of nitroglycerine it's contained in it was originally a glass bulb and then later replaced with a with a brittle plastic bulb and the whole surface was coated with a, a very very sticky adhesive substance hence the name sticky bomb the, the sphere does nothing else it performs no other function than simply allowing the thing to be transported around without sticking to everything that it touches so the drill was that you pulled your pin out holding down this lever here got rid of the spherical container and then you had a choice you could either throw the bomb at what you wanted to destroy and it was generally intended to uh, to attack armored vehicles or bunkers something like that but the preferred method was to while retaining the the lever uh, and, and that keeps the striker in place running up and jabbing it on the surface of the thing that you wanted to destroy and then beating a hasty retreat in about five seconds before it went off it was a very unpopular uh, <clears throat> device originally it was rejected by the army for all kinds of safety reasons but in 1940 they were looking for things that the home guard could use uh, against any German invaders and it was resurrected and given some formal um, overhaul of the design. It was a civilian design originally. There's no recorded instance of it actually being used in battle in a, in a conventional infantry environment although uh, there are recorded instances of it being used by resistance forces to uh, basically for demolition type tasks. So that's number 74 British Sticky Bomb. Also had one called the Gammon Bomb. I've got that coming. It's, it's essentially the same principle. It's just a bag filled with a high explosive, plastic explosive with a, with a simple detonator um, relying primarily on, on blast for its effect and it, again with hand grenades generally they're either blast uh, which makes them offensive grenades they don't spit fragments out in all directions it allows soldiers to throw them and then follow them up very very closely while the enemy is stunned by the blast the defensive grenades uh, tend to be you know, cast iron bodies they throw fragments out quite away in fact the, the British number 36 was one where you had to throw it and then take cover because the fragments were sufficiently large to travel about 100 meters so they're generally classified as, as defensive grenades designed to be thrown from cover with fragmentation effect this is a Japanese unusual toward at the end of the war <coughs> where metal was becoming a real strategic resource for them they improvised and they just created these ceramic grenades were simply filled with powder of some sort, I don't know whether it was gunpowder or an explosive charge, and it could be uh, initiated with a, a pull, friction pull um, fuse, or uh, I guess, I don't know this for a fact, but it could also just be simply something that's a fuse that's lit. But, um, you know, needs must, and you'd get quite a nasty fragmentation effect at close range. The one on the left, or correction, the right here is a, a Russian grenade RPD, I think it is. God, I'm going to have to check this. This is the, the Soviet solution to the anti tank grenade. They used them a lot more extensively than just about any other army during the, the course of the Second World War. The original design was simply a sort of a muscled up version of their high explosive grenade, and it relied on blast, purely on blast, for its effect. It wasn't very good. But they came up with a shaped charge, and in the interior here, there is a shaped charge and this part of the grenade contains a drogue or just a, basically a piece of cloth the idea being when you're ready to go you pull the pin holding down on the lever here when you throw the grenade it activates uh, it arms it this comes away and it trails a cloth drogue which keeps the grenade stabilized in the air so that it lands in the correct attitude because it's a, an impact detonated grenade and it relies on the the thing coming down at an angle striking the, the armoured vehicle and the shape charge then having its effect it'll blow a hole in three inches of steel it was it was, it was uh, you know, not a bad effort the Germans took it very seriously and uh, improved the design came up with their famous magnetic mine one of the least effective hand grenades somebody was asking what this is in the cabinet this is one of 
the Italian Red Devils. There are three different types of anti-personnel hand grenade. It's very, very small as you can see, uh, not particularly effective. There is in this a, um, a kind of a tube running down the middle which is, has a high tensile spring wire round, wound around it and that was the, uh, that's what they relied upon for the fragmentation effect. Really it's an offensive grenade, it doesn't produce large fragments which will go any distance, there's not much explosive in it. As you can see it's quite an ugly looking thing. Um, they weren't taken seriously, in fact in the New Zealand division in the desert special orders had to be promulgated because the soldiers, when they were bored shitless, would amuse themselves by throwing these at each other. <laughs> so after a couple of guys had been wounded there was a, a formal order came out that forbade the practice of hand grenade juggling or um, I think it was called the hot potato. So this is one of three different types of Italian blast grenade and uh, probably one of the least effective that you'll see. I have a couple of more coming, um, some Japanese things um, and some other bits and pieces so again just once over lightly, 4 to 5 minute food.